Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight on our news. The tourism minister responds to a possible delay at Bahamar. Erka set to review the way media is regulated in the country. The story coming up. Our news takes a day at the ranch. Our news is brought to you by Alive, the nation's newest and best LTE network. Good to be alive. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Christina McNeil. Topping news tonight, Tourism Minister Dioniso Diagular says he finds it odd that a multi-billion dollar resort could be delayed because of lounge chairs. The Tourism Minister was responding to the recent revelation that China Construction America could miss yet another Bahamar completion date due to non-receipt of lounge chairs. But the Tourism Minister says he believes the new owners will do all they can to ensure the resort fully opens as scheduled. Jasmine Brown has the details in this report. The tourism minister says he found it strange that the fate of the project could rely on something as simple as lounge chairs. I found it a little odd that the reason for the, the delay as reported in the press yesterday is deck chairs. I don't think that's going to delay the opening, but you know, I don't know. Um, we, we just have to get it open as soon as possible. According to an article in the Tribune, CCA filed a lawsuit in a South Florida federal court alleging that the lounge chair vendor Source Outdoor could cause irreparable damage if 1,420 chairs are not released to Bahamar. Diagular says from what he knows of the new owners, he expects they will overcome this latest snag. I think they'll address that issue. I, 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 you know, I, I don't think that if you're investing significant amounts of money in getting that project ready, really the, you know, the deck chairs are the issue that will cause a delay in opening and Bahamians getting employed. I didn't believe that as something significant, but I haven't spoken to them as yet and uh, get, get the other side of the story to find out why it's so pressing. But my initial reaction is I don't think deck chairs are going to really um, delay the opening uh, of a hotel of that size with that magnitude of an investment. Bahamar executives told Guardian Business yesterday they could not comment on an ongoing litigation matter between CCA and one of its vendors. Despite the latest legal battle, the tourism minister says the government is very anxious for Bahamar to be finished and opened. The Bahamas government is very, very, very anxious for that project to be finished. Um, we uh, um, have heard about endless delays, obviously, uh, in the past, and we're just very, very anxious for it to be open and for Bahamians to be employed. Bahamar opened its Grand Hyatt Towers in April, which represented a soft opening of the larger mega resort property. The entire property, which includes the SLS, was expected to open this quarter. Rosewood is expected to open in the first quarter of 2018. Diagular said he has no meetings planned with executives at Bahama or CCA, but at some point he will get an update. I'm sure in the cursory day of in the cursory course of my day, I'll put in a phone call and find out, you know, is there any concern? Are we still on schedule for the dates? Uh, October was for the SLS, I believe March or April of next year is for the Rosewood. And if there's any change, I, I'm sure they will appraise me of that. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Well, the new Bahamas Power and Light Board will issue a request for proposals in a bid to find new ways to generate energy and keep the lights on for Bahamians. He says the board, which is expected to be named this week, will have its hands full, but issues concerning consistent electricity will top the list of priorities. They're going to issue a request for proposals, and uh, we're going to try to, in a transparent fashion, to get the best possible companies to serve the Bahamian people so that these summer nightmares are going to end. Works Minister Desmond Bannister says the process will be a transparent one. We are going to create a very transparent process so that we can have alternate means of energy in our country. The Works Minister expressed disappointment that the power company has had serious issues with recurring outages. Bannister added that several companies have already expressed interest in the RFP process of ideas. Uh, the first is an LPG uh, based facilities um, that can have a number of uh, services. There's also waste energy so we can serve two purposes. We can do something about our landfill and we can also create energy from garbage. And, and then there's the solar proposals. 
and I'm sure that this, this board is going to look all, at all of them and see the ones that best serve our country. Now, in addition to the RFP process, the board will also have to look into other issues, including that ongoing audit at BPL. Back in May, the police launched an investigation into the alleged theft of more than $1 million from BPL. The works minister says there was no update on that matter. In other news, the government of the Bahamas is preparing to roll out enhanced security measures at airports across the country. Minister of Tourism, Aviation and Bahamas Air Dionisio Diaguilar says the Minnesota administration is assessing whether local airports have the necessary equipment and staff to carry out the enhanced screening now required by the United States Department of Homeland Security. Um, and you would like to take an electronic device, uh, anything bigger than a cell phone? it's going to be subject to additional screening. So basically what, what, the, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to swap the electronic device and that's going to take some extra time. Um, the United States has received intelligence that uh, persons in the Middle East have figured out how to put ele uh, explosive devices within these electronic devices such as laptops. Those Homeland Security guidelines require all 280 airports that are the last points of departure for the U.S. to possess equipment capable of detecting explosive residue on passengers' hands. The tourism minister says the new measures must be in place within 21 days with the tougher security checks initiated by fall 2017. Airports which fail to implement the explosives detecting equipment could be cut off from direct flights to the U.S. Diagler says the only foreseeable issue is getting security measures in airports in the Family Islands up to standard in time. Where it does affect us, however, is the Family Islands. Because mm -hmm. not in every Family Island airport we have this device to detect um, explosive materials. And we're either going to have to divert passengers who want to travel with these electronic devices to airports where these, de where these uh, detection devices are um, or purchase additional equipment for these airports. He admits it will be a costly exercise. And it's going to cost us fifty to $75,000 to buy additional equipment to put, put in place. So we need to decide how best to proceed on that. And that's fifty to $70,000 per airport? No, that's per piece of equipment. Per so piece. obviously at LPIA you have more than one piece of equipment. You just simply, based on the volume of people, you're going to need additional equipment. Diagular says his ministry is meeting to discuss measures to mitigate any lengthy delays, including overtime for security personnel. He suggests in the short term, travelers get to the airport at least three hours before their flights. Well, another prison officer has been arrested for drug possession. Police say the 25-year-old officer had just arrived for duty at the Department of Corrections around 10 last night when officers from the Drug Enforcement Unit searched him. The DEU officers, who were acting on information, allegedly found marijuana in the prison officer's possession and took him into custody. DEU officers also searched the young officer's home in Pastel Gardens, where they allegedly found more marijuana. Investigations continue. This latest arrest comes less than a week after a 45-year-old prison officer who was caught with drugs intended for an inmate pleaded guilty to drug possession. And a man on bail for a recent firearm charge was gunned down outside a home on Bimini Avenue last night. According to police reports, the victim was standing near the home off Market Street shortly before midnight when a gunman approached him and shot him before fleeing on foot. The man was pronounced dead on the scene. Police have confirmed that the victim was on bail after being arrested for firearm possession in May. Authorities say they have no motive at this point as their investigation is still in the early stage. Sources on the police force tell us that the victim was arrested in connection with the August 2014 murder of then Prime Minister Perry Christie's press secretary, Latori Mackey, off Market Street. In February of this year, the Attorney General stopped the prosecution of two men accused of Mackey's murder. And horseback riding hasn't been widely embraced in the Bahamas since the early 1970s. And it's said to be an expensive hobby, but now it can cost you little to nothing in fees for a day of fun. April Sands has this report. Well, while the saying goes a man's best friend is a dog, it's obvious they weren't keeping horses like Coco here in mind.
He's just one of 20 horses here at the Camperdown Ranch, serving for years as a form of therapy to hundreds of special needs children. Coco now accompanies a lineup of other show-stopping horses at the ranch, like DJ here, who is now in retirement from horseback racing. But after years of hard work, they're now catered to at just one of the few ranches on the island. The Camperdown Ranch, where horse instructors like Kim Johnson say they're practically treated like royalty. People look at it as more of like a money maker. Mm -hmm. And as long as those horses can walk and do a job, they don't care how much they're feeding them or how much effort they put into taking care of them. Here, they get hay, they get grain, they get turnout, they get to go out and grass, they get to, they get to have their own time. Um, and we make sure that we keep them nice and fat because they have to be in order to work. And what would be top-notch treatment without a little bit of fun on the side? I like the horses a lot and the teachers are very, very nice. When we're dealing with the little ones, we always have someone there with them. They're not doing it by themselves. Um, and where they have such a short attention span, we kind of keep their lessons to what they can handle. While the ranch remains a non-profit organization, Mitzi Johnson, president of the Camperdown Camp, says it's the perception of the sport being expensive that has held the Bahamian public back from embracing it since the early 70s, when she said it was the thing to do. It is an expensive sport because it's not only you buying a pair of shoes and going out and playing soccer, mm -hmm. you also have to be able to maintain a horse and that is the expensive part of it. We at Camper Down here, we own the horses, we're maintaining the horses, it's our expense. We also have children here that are riding on scholarship, mm -hmm. we have scholarship opportunities and um, we also have a free program for children with autism that come and ride every Saturday morning. She invites kids of all ages to participate in the training sessions as an introduction to horseback riding. I've been learning lots of new stuff like how to control horses. Summer camp is in full swing and it's between the hours of 8.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. For more details, call 324-2065. Reporting for our news, I'm April Sands. Thanks, April. Still to come on our news, regulations governing media in the country may be about to change. That and more when our news returns.